Hello there. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Fandom Fights. We are here for a very exciting matchup. It is the third in a trilogy long in the making. Uh, it's Eli McKegg going up against Caleb Coho. Uh, in the past of the, the two prior installments, they came out pretty close to each other. Um, you know, the, the, it, was, it was a hot episode one, and then they, they quick rushed the second into production. Uh, makes sense given who was behind the scenes at the time. And then uh, now you have the third, the long awaited third chapter of the trilogy finally coming out. Uh, and it's Eli versus Coho. Nick is here with me for this one. Uh, Nick, what yeah. year is it? 2019? Ho -ho. Uh, what do you think? No, it's 2024. But you should get some help. Um, I, I need it. I'm excited for this because, yes, Eli Coho, a tale as old as time. The two have played before twice. Coho won both of those, but it's a different time. These are new players. Eli took an extended break, came back, and I'm going to be full on honest. I thought we were going to see Eli just, like, come back and kind of fizzle out and be like, I can still hang. Like, I, I'm going to give it one more go. And then just, and they're just like, not do very well. What He's I'm doing, afraid of doing, yeah. <laughs> He's done great, like. Absolutely fantastic. His accuracy has been been insane. He's 2-0 and officially. He almost won a five-way play-in to get into the tournament. He lost to Kaiser, and Kaiser then went on to make upsets in the tournament. So, like, Eli's been having a killer year. Coho, too. Coho took Tyler Birch to, to sudden death. Uh, had an unlucky loss uh, early on in the year to Jacoby, I think. Uh, maybe. Yeah, Jacoby. Um, but... Both have been doing very well. I think this is going to be as evenly matched as it has been in the past, and I don't think I can accurately call the outcome. Yeah, no, I would agree with everything you said. So let's get into it and talk to the players in the promos. Uh, yeah, uh, they made the joke. What year is it? Uh, no, but Eli and I have played each other many times across the history of fandom, and we both have been gone for a while. We both happen to come back at the same time. Weird how that works, uh, but I'm excited that we're playing each other again. Uh, it's it's always nice to see a familiar face. I'm happy Eli's back and playing because he he was he was really on fire back when we first played the first two times. Uh, so it's exciting to see him back. Um, we're both very different than the last time we played, so this could really go either way. But I am uh, I'm really hoping that history's on my side. <laughs> I'd like to win, uh, but again, good luck to you, Eli, and hopefully better luck to me. Hey, I'm back, and I'm going up against Coho, a match I've been wanting since I had my first match here. It's like, man, I want to play Coho again. I just want to get that third match. And look, I'm getting the third match, and I'm very excited to go up against Coho. Look, in the past, when we've gone up against each other, it seemed more antagonistic between us in those two prior times. But this time, you know what? That antagonism, it's in the past for me. Look, I am going into this match knowing that Coho is up to on me and I'm excited to go up against Coho and he was right. We are two very different players. I have surprisingly for me have done so much better than I have in the prior seasons. And I am very excited to see how this match goes. I'm hoping that I can say I at least have one. I can say third time's a charm and, but we'll see because I'm excited. So let's get into it. Yeah, I forgot to mention that Eli has been, like, calling out Coho. Coho, I think, called out Eli. Very exciting stuff. Nick, thoughts on the promos? Antagonism. Round number one. How's it going to work? 
Now, everyone's going to work like this. There's going to be 10 questions that are on fan of fights. Each player's going to have 15 seconds to write down their answer. At the end of 15 seconds, we will say pens down, at which point the players will reveal their answer and say it aloud. Each correct answer is worth one point apiece. Each any individual player get all 10 questions correct from round, round number one. They would receive a bonus question. Each player will have three repeats, one challenge for the entirety of the match. Players, any questions as we get into round number one? Alrighty, first question comes in the category of the Wizarding World. What Wizarding World character says the quote, why don't you run along and play with your chemistry set? I said this to you once. And then I did. And oh, now I'm a chemist. Nerd. You're Thank a chemist. You. <laughs> I, yeah, I gave you the springboard towards your profession. I appreciate Bye. it. Four, three. Repeat the question, please. All right. First repeat for Caleb. Question again. What Wizarding World character says the quote, why don't you run along and play with your chemistry set? How you doing, buddy? I'm okay. Um, I just watched two films where the main mm. characters had no chemistry. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. And it was Good movies bad chemistry anna watched the end of the second one without me as i was oh. doing this and she was texting me like what the hell is this person's problem Hands down. let's go to caleb uh, i said mad eye moody and let's go to eli i said james potter uh both incorrect we're looking for serious black all right your next question is in the category of star trek what is the name of the boat that the crew are aboard in the hollow deck when Worf is promoted in Star Trek Generations. Your thoughts on Generations? Not the film, just in general. Some of them are worse than others. Yeah. We're not in a great one. True. Feel like it's better than the one below us, but five. Very true. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Eli. I just said Enterprise. And Caleb. I said Interceptor. Enterprise is correct. So oh. Eli will get on the board, making it one to zero. Uh, what's next, Nick? Next question comes in the category of DC. Which DC film was the first to not fe feature either Superman or Batman? No. Are you a Superman or Batman type of guy? Like in what context? Like yeah, just if you had to pick one like, as, like that you like more than the other. Oh, like as a like as a friend or like like uh I would say a dinner guest. 5 Superman. One. Pens down. That's fair. Let's go to Caleb. Swamp Thing. And Eli. Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing is correct. So Caleb's on the board. It is two to one. And your next question is going to come in the category of Pixar. Who voices disgust in Inside Out? Who disgusts you? Well, there's the obvious one. Jack Pinchuk. Um, but beyond that, Ellie sometimes when she like pukes on me and stuff, she's very cute, but then all of a sudden she's like, Bleh. it's not fun. Five, four, yeah, no. three, not two, for me. one, <laughs> that's down. Go tell Anna that. Let's go to Eli. Mindy Kalen. And Coho. Mindy Kalen. That is correct. So three to two. What's next? Next question comes in the category of sci-fi icons. Who funds the Paranormal Research Center so that they can analyze ghosts and their supernatural properties in Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? Did you see this one? I did. You like it? No. Me either. I'm about to rewatch it, though. I just rewatched the original two mm. and then the remake. So up next is the one before this, and then this one. That would not, not look. You're gonna watch the one before this, before this one. Yeah, I know. Five. That's weird. Three, That's weird two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Coho. 
I said Winston Zedmore. And let's go to Eli. Winston Zedmore. I think we could take both of those. Yes, Winston. I Spelling on the names was terrible, but uh, four to three is the score. Your next question is coming in the category of Star Wars. What part of the astromech droid that Owen originally chooses does Luke say is bad that supposedly caused C-3PO to recommend R2 in Star Wars A New Hope? That was a long worded sentence. Okay. Perhaps this writer is just getting their feet. I cut a couple words because it felt like it was going on. They were also rather repetitive, but it's okay. Five. They are doing their best. Three. And I love them, too. One, hands down. Let's go to Eli. Power converter? And Caleb. I said carburetor. Uh, both are incorrect. Uncle Owen, this R2 unit has a bad motivator. Uh, so, uh, Nick, what's next? Next question comes to the category of criminal underworld. What criminal underworld film features a character's mother releasing that character and his allies from jail? Bots on jail. Like more than prison. Yeah. Amen. Amen to that one, brother. Woohoo! We're a funny bunch. Who's we? Five for the royal. <laughs> Two. Mm. One. Pens down. Let's go to Coho. Ocean's 12. And Eli. F9. Ocean's 12 is correct. So Coho ties it up four to four. Uh, your next question is in the category of horror icons. Who directed 2009's Friday the 13th? Yeah. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I am rather tired. Not to date this too much, but it is Labor Day, and I labored today. Not to date this too much, but here's the exact date of yeah. today. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, since you didn't date it too much, how could you possibly, how could you date it more? Uh, I couldn't, I guess. That's fair. Fine. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> this is you're smart, Nick. Uh, let's go to uh, Eli. I think he produced it. I know he didn't direct it. Michael Bay. Uh, he did produce it. Uh, let's go to Caleb. I feel like it's some dumb name like Adam Kimmel. Uh, the answer is Marcus Nispel. Sure, one of those. <laughs> uh, Cody says I could have said date and time. Your next question comes in the category of Disney animation. What is the name of Asha's goat in Wish? Uh, give me your best goat sound. Ah! <laughs> oh, that is not the noise I make when I do the. So Ellie has a little farm puzzle and she hands me the pieces and goes, huh? And then I do the noises. The only one she can do is moo. Okay. Uh, but for goat, I do more of like a. Bleh. Okay, well, nice. you you are less correct than me, and I wasn't. Correct. What <laughs> bends down? Let's go to Caleb. I said Bartleby. I couldn't fucking remember. And Eli. I said Maurice. Uh, both are incorrect. We're looking for Valentino. Valentino. <sighs> sure. Uh, and your final question in this uh, round is it the category of epic adventures. What specifically does Bilbo take from Bayorn's garden in the Desolation of Smog, which in Battle of the Five Armies, he says he wants to put in his own garden? Got yeah, like a movie spanning type of question here. Very interesting. Yeah. It's like that time we wrote that question, like, hey, that's how the question started. Hey, exclamation point. Remember hey, that you. Harry from the first film? Well, in the fourth one, what does he do in this scene? Hey, hey, Five. you. Four. <laughs> I got a question for you. Two. One. Pens down. Let's go to Eli. A wolf lily. 
Oh my. Uh, let's go to Caleb. I said Gillyweed. These weren't the ones I watched for this, damn it. Uh, the answer is an acorn. It's a very normal <laughs> thing uh, that exists in the world. <laughs> so, of course it is. Uh, we are all tied up, Nick. Four to four. Is that what you have? That's what I have, Tim. All right. How's round number two going to work? Round number two is going to work like this. It is the wheel round. We have a wheel with eight fandom categories on it, as well as spinners and opponents' choice. Each player will get a spin at the wheel. If they like when they spin the first time, they can keep it. If not, they can choose to spin again, but they will be forced to keep what they spin the second time. You'll get five questions in the chosen category, each worth two points apiece, unless you like to check down a multiple choice, at which point it will only be worth one, but be on the lookout if stealing is available in round number two. Your categories on the wheel today are epic adventures, horror icons, Pixar, sci-fi icons, creature features, criminal underworld, MCU, and the world of DC. Go 10. All right, uh, we're tied up, but Eli is the higher-ranked player. Eli, would you like to spin first or defer to Coho? I'll defer to Coho. All right, this is going to be Coho's Spin at the Wheel, brought to you by the Palladium Hotel Company, and it lands on Pixar. I'll keep that. Okay. Uh, Nick, will you please go ahead and read Coho his questions in the category of Pixar? Gladly, Coho, I'll be reading your questions in the category of Pixar. Are you prepared for them? Let's do it. First question. Which Pixar film features a character putting a bra over their eyes? Wally. That's correct for two points. Second question. Who voices Jackson Storm in Cars 3? Army Hammer. That's correct for two points. Your third question. What position at Monsters University does the character Hard Scrabble have in Monsters University? Dean. That is correct. Two points. Your penultimate question. Who approaches Bob and Helen outside the motel to tell them about Winston's meeting in Incredibles 2? Oh, I think it's... Five. Four? Rick Dicker. That is incorrect. Eli Chance for the two-point steal. Frozone. That is correct for a two-point steal. All right, Coho, your final question in Pixar. In Toy Story 4, what possession of Bo Peeps does Woody recognize in the antique store, causing him to first go in? Multiple choice. All right, is it A, cape, B, staff, C, sheep, D, lamp? Lamp. That is correct for one point. All right, so Coho gets his total up to 11, but with the steal, Eli is at six. Is that what you have? That's what I have, Tim. Okay, so we are going to bring back the wheel. This is going to be the spin for Eli. And it lands on sci fi icons. I'm going to spin again. Things okay. are like there more. All right, this is what you're going to be stuck with. Oh, well. All right, Eli, I'll be giving you your questions in the category of sci-fi icons. Are you ready? Yep. Okay, your first question. Which sci-fi icons film features the characters Mac, Poncho, Billy, and Blaine? Multiple choice, just for safety. All right, your options are A, T2 Judgment Day, B, Alien 3, C, Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, or D, Predator? Predator. That is correct for one point. Your second question. Who plays John Connor in Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines? Nick Stahl. That is correct for two points. Your third question. In Ghostbusters... The Ghostbusters have to fight a giant version of a mascot that represents what kind of food? A marshmallow. That is correct. For two points in a tie game. Your penultimate question. In Bumblebee, how does Charlie bring Bumblebee back to life, thus restoring his memories after he is killed by Dropkick? Multiple choice. All right, your options are A, electrocutes him. B, plays music. C, pushes him in water. Or D, pounds on his chest. Uh, 
electrocutes him. That is correct for one point and the lead. And your final question. What is the nickname of Biff's relative Bufford in Back to the Future Part 3? Buford. Buford. Seen the movie once. Multiple choice. All right, your options are A, Sharpshooter, B, Steamroller, C, Mad Dog, or D, Chump Change? Mad Dog? That is correct for one point and the clean sweep of sci-fi icons. And so, Nick, I have Eli getting his total up to 13 to Caleb's 11. Is that what you have? That's what I have, Tim. All right, round number three. How's it going to work? Round number three is going to work like this. It is the betting round. We have five more questions in the realm of fandom fights. Once the players see the category, they can bet anywhere between zero and two points on the question. If they get the question correct, they will gain those points. If they get the question incorrect, they will lose those points. We will play until someone is mathematically eliminated or we have reached the end of the match. Players, any questions as we get into round number three? All right, go, Tim. All right, first category you can bet points on is Marvel. Let's get bets, starting with Eli. One point. Okay, and Caleb. One. Okay, your question in the category of Marvel. In Kingsman, the Secret Service, the final three contestants are drugged at a bar and then put in a simulation where they believe they are going to be killed. How specifically? You a fan of the Kingsman? Yeah. Or just this movie? Um, ooh, yeah, just this one. Yeah. Sequel's not great. No. Prequel's well, fine. Fine, too long. Yeah. Kind of exactly. we're too long. We're, we're all we're, too long, if we're being honest. Would have rather had a third one yeah. than a prequel. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Eli. Drowning. And Caleb. That's a drop from a plane. Both are incorrect. We're looking for uh, run over by a train. They are put on the railroad tracks. Then train runs them over. Uh, so 12 to 10, still a two-point game. Uh, Nick, what's next? Next category you can bet points on is sci-fi icons. Let's get bets, starting with Caleb. I said two. Okay, and uh, Eli. I said zero. It's going to be interesting. Okay. What's the question, Nick? Your question is... Who plays the Merovingian's wife, Persephone, in the Matrix franchise? I'm glad I didn't have to ask that one. Lots of hard words in there. Like, what did you say it was? Fr Fran? Pierce of Pahoney. Pierce Fran of Fran Ch Fran Ch Chizzy? Bufford. <laughs> Bufford. Merovingian. Three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Eli, who bet zero. Uh, I said Monica Bellucci. And Coho. Jada Pinkett Smith. Monica Bellucci is the correct answer. So Coho will lose two points, go down to eight. It is now 12 to eight, four point game. Your next category you can bet points on is YA. Okay. Let's get bets, starting with Eli. Zero. And Coho. Two. Okay, here's the sitch. If Coho hits this, we move on. If Coho misses, the game goes to Eli. Your question is, after cliff jumping, Bella comes back to find which vampire at her house in Twilight New Moon? When's the last time you just looked at the moon? Um... I like just looked at you mean like as opposed to doing something else or yeah you just like were enamored by its beauty five four three I don't know all right that is the second repeat for Caleb after cliff jumping Bella comes back to find which vampire at her house in Twilight New Moon do you like have that Mark oh yeah Oh, yeah. You're telling me you've never just, like, looked outside and been like, oh, the moon looks beautiful tonight. And then you just look at it for a little bit. 
We can't see the moon from here because New York's disgusting and the sky is oh, gross. Fair, fair. Yeah, no, I don't have that yeah. in here. So five, four. There's that. Three. Last repeat. All right, there's your final repeat. Your question again. After cliff jumping, Bella comes back to find which vampire at her house in Twilight New Moon. Do you ever see the dawn when it's first break? <laughs> no. This you know that there's more books than just these books, but they're told from like other per characters' perspectives in the series. Is gross. This is wild. Yeah. Five, four, and and this. Two. I know. I realized one tens <laughs> down as soon as I started talking. Uh, let's go That's to fun. Eli. I just said Ashley Green's vampire. Uh, I'm not sure who Ashley Green is, so maybe uh, let's go to Coho. Yeah, I remember the guy's name. I just said Marcel. Good, 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 good. And your winner, Eli <laughs> McKegg. Uh, Nick, was it Ashley Green's vampire? Yeah. Alice. 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 Yeah, there you go. That was the answer. Uh, yeah. So final score of uh, 12 to 6. Nick, thoughts on the match? Uh, good match. Close like I wanted throughout round one and two. And I think just a couple different betting decisions made the gap wider than, than it needed to be. It really was close. Like Coho hits that. They're back to two-point game. Coho hits Monica Bellucci. It's tied. Like It, it was very close despite the score uh, being what it ended up being. Uh, like I said, these guys are in two very different places than they were. That doesn't mean, and I honestly think they're both better than where they were. Um, but the question is, like, did Eli pick up some stuff that Coho might have left behind? Maybe was this a fluke? I don't know. Do we see matches four and five eventually? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, well, yeah. only one Eli person one. will be able to tell you, Nick, of in the future. He writes the schedule. Uh, great job. Let's get into the post-match interviews. Coho, I don't know about you, but Eli surprised me this year and that he almost seemed like he was on a mission. And I don't know if his mission was this, like if this was the culmination of his mission to come, like he got prepared to come back and got got his accuracy up and, and beat very good people, if only to face you. Um, in which case I would say, it's good that you can drive someone to, to better themselves that way. Sure. Uh, and I do think this match could have gone either way. Like the category, truthfully, I don't usually say this, but there were some categories coming up like at four and five. Had they been questioned like two and three, probably could have swung your way and you would have been in the lead and things would have gone differently. So, but as you both know, tis the name of the game. Um, yeah. You still got one up on Eli, so you could always hold that over him. But is that what you plan to do? Um, I would like match four and five, uh, if nothing more uh, than to just run it back, uh, even up the, the the score, maybe go best of seven, who knows. Um, but um, I'm glad that I live rent-free in Eli's mind enough for him to like come back and be like, I want Coho. And for me to come back and be like, this is the epilogue to a championship winning career where I just get to come and have fun and play people I never got to play. Uh, so that's, that's where I'm at. Like good for Eli for winning. I, I think I, I'm not happy with myself today. I think I played a lot lower than my own standard. Um, definitely felt like I overthought some questions, underthought others. Um, I could definitely have played way better than I did. I, I probably would have bet way different than I did, uh, had I gone with Frozone on that 50, 50 in my brain. Um, so I don't know. Eli played great. I played sloppy, um, but he he beat me today fair and square. So yeah, let's see. Coho, I've kind of stopped asking people this question because ninety percent of them just give me the like, oh, anyone you got? But name someone you haven't played, and that's difficult to do. That you would like to? Um, that I haven't played is a great question. I I never got to play Castor one on one. Um, I would love to play Robert Castor one on one. I need to get way better to do that because he will kill me if I play like I did today. But he's someone that I respect in fandom uh, that I haven't gotten a chance to play. So I would love to go one-on-one. -on -one. Let me, you know, Rocky montage myself up to that level. And, uh, and yeah, I'd love to play Caster. Sweet deal. Coho, uh, great game. We'll see you next time. Uh, Eli McKegg, I, I don't know for sure. 
was this your goal in, in coming back? Like get a third match against Koho and, and, and overcome that hump that was, I would say like the biggest um, stop block, like in your early game. Is that kind of, was that the motivation here? I mean, that's one of the motivations of making sure that I could get a win against Koho in Multiplex fandom fights. Cause that's something he's always been able to lot against me. But I know for a fact, going into this match, I was thinking, well, look, Koho has beaten me twice. So if he beats me again, then I can just put, a little bow on that story and be like, all right, he's beat me three times in a row. He is the better man. I'm willing to now let get that go and move on. But now getting the win, it's like, oh, I've proven that I can beat him. And now I want more. I want to be able to get to that point, like have those rubber matches of a four and a five, maybe even a six and a seven if if we get to that point. But yeah, this this match, I was going into it being like, you know, if I win, I win. That's great. I would love it. But if I lose that's okay as well because ultimately I'm in the part of my life of at least in playing where it's like, yeah, I would love to finally get those accomplishments in fandom fights that I've never been able to get like a singles title. Maybe who knows if I can find a partner, maybe even get a team's title run. But ultimately at the same time, I'm like, there's no point in stressing about it too much anymore because the stressful part of my career in fandom fights was early on. Now I'm just like, you know, just got to go in Zen. And I think that's legitimately what helped me with the win. Yeah, no, even questions you weren't betting on, you were hitting like, I thought you did very, very well. And Eli, you're on a three game win streak. You, you have gone technically undefeated in your return season. Yes, you you didn't win the five way, but ultimately like the contender gauntlet, like those things are hearsay. Regular matches, you've won all of them. Three wins in a row. You've got a ten and eight record. Like you're you're ranked rather highly. You could be very close to a title track um, next year. And yeah, I'd love to see you on a team. We have plenty of team debut spots and plenty of people whose team partners um, either left or or they're sitting or they're just they've been playing forever and aren't on a team. So Eli, I'd love to see you back on a team. And I think the way you're playing now, you could get very very close, if not even win. Uh, that singles title. So yeah, set those goals for yourself. Stay Zen. It's one thing Tim never did that I kept telling him to do, but he always gets mad when he misses a few questions. Um, you don't, sir. So congratulations <laughs> on the win today. Uh, and we'll see you next year, Eli. Thank you. I don't believe you ever told me to stay Zen. I believe you told me that I should show up drunk more. Yes. Same thing. Not drunk, but having fun. Same thing. Maybe Eli did great. Uh, that was a fantastic win for him on his record. I'm glad that uh, the trilogy is now complete. Let's see if we get the full saga eventually. But uh, I'm looking forward to whatever's next for both Caleb and Eli. So thank you to Caleb and Eli. Thank you to Nick for writing. I have been Tim. We'll see you guys next time with another great match of Phantom Fights. Until then, have a great night. Bye. Bye.